to my channel. So in today's video, I'm going to be showing you some tips and tricks that I have learned over the last couple of years on how to up your makeup game. So if you want to learn how to up your makeup game, grab your tools and let's get started. All right, now that we've got our hair pulled back and we're looking like we're five years old, we're going to get started. So one of the most important things I can tell you when you're starting to do makeup is what you do before you do your makeup is the most important thing you can do. So skincare is essential. So if you want your makeup to look good, no matter if you're wearing full coverage or a light foundation, it's not going to look as good as it possibly can unless you do skincare before. So get you a good skincare routine. Um, there's always websites on the internet that can help you figure out what's the best for you. If you have oily skin, dry skin, combination skin, but just make sure that you have a good skincare routine. So next I'm going to go in with the primer you can use. Um, a moisturizer, primer, whatever. This is not one of my essential steps, but I always use it because my skin needs a little hydration. So I'm gonna go in with the Emberlease Primer Moisturizer. And we're just gonna um, put a little bit on our skin. Put the mirror back so I can see. And we're gonna rub it in. Now you're gonna let this sit for a few minutes so it can absorb in your skin, and then we're gonna move on to another step. So one of the most crucial steps that I have learned that help me because I do have freckles and I do have some discoloration and sunspots from being out in the sun when I was younger and nobody telling me that it wasn't good for you. Yeah, so I do some color correcting now because I have like some bluish tint underneath my eyes and I have the freckles. I go in with an orange color corrector. So this one is going to cancel out any blueness that you have in your skin. If you have any redness in your skin, then you would want to use a green color corrector. So I'm just going to go in very lightly. This is the LA Girl Pro Concealer. And we're just going to put just a little bit here in the corners of my eyes. And then I go in and just tap a little bit over the freckles or sunspots that need a little bit more help to cover them up. Just like that. And I just go in with a wet beauty blender and I just blend it out. Now if you don't have any discoloration in your skin or you don't need this color corrector, you can totally skip this step. Um, I use it because I do have the freckles and I'm a little bit older so it seems to help cancel out some of the blue and the freckles. And so I just use it and press right underneath your eyes. Be very careful when you're working underneath your eyes because that skin is so thin. And you always want to go in with a light hand with this color corrector because if you put too much, it can make your foundation look, have an orange tint to it. So just keep that in mind. Okay, so now we've got our foundation on. I just went in with the Huda Beauty and the Pure 4-in-1 foundations. I mixed these two together and I used my Morphe M439 little Kabuki brush and I just blended it all out. Now this gives you pretty pretty full coverage, which I like, but the next step we're going to talk about that really helped me, you know, elevate the makeup game is my Tarte Shape Tape Concealer, okay? You don't have to use this brand, but the concealer is going to help you if you want to conceal any areas or if you want to highlight the T-zone of your face. So if you're going to conceal any areas, you want to make sure that you get a concealer that's close as possible to your foundation color, because if it's lighter, it's not going to blend and help you cover those areas that you're wanting to conceal. Now, if you're wanting to highlight the areas, you're going to go with a concealer that's about one to two shades lighter than your foundation. So, I really like the Tarte Shape Tape. It's high coverage. It doesn't crease, all, you know, very much on me, and um, it just seems to work very well. So, I'm just going to take it. Now, where you put this is all of your preference. There's many things going around the internet about you need to put it here for lifting, you need to put it here to, to highlight, you need to put it here. So, you find what works for you, and that's the way you can stick with it. So I'm going to put just a little bit here underneath my eyes, right here. Now you can put some here as well. We'll go ahead and try that and I can show you guys this. Right here at the corner of your eyes and that's going to help give you that lifted look. I'm also going to take it down the center of my nose, on my cupid's bow, and on my chin, just like that. 
Now, if you have time, let it sit at least for a few minutes. It's gonna help it dry a little bit, and once it dries just a little bit, it's gonna help give it more coverage and hide whatever imperfections or even highlight the areas that you want. Just be careful underneath your eyes, especially if you're older. It can have a tendency to settle into those fine lines and creases, so if you wanna go a little bit lighter, if you're a little older in age or have more mature skin, go a little bit lighter underneath the eyes because that will help it from settling into those lines because there's not as much product. So I'm just gonna go back in with my Kabuki brush, and I'm just gonna blend this out. I do the T-zone in the middle first and I leave the eyes for last. So you just want to press with this brush. Don't drag and don't pull because that's going to pull and mess your foundation up and it's going to pull your skin and we don't want to pull our skin. So I'm just going to go in and press just like this and bring this up around the outside and that's gonna give your eyes a more lifted look. So I'm using a, a, a concealer that is two shades lighter than my foundation, so it's gonna help me highlight my T-zone, so I'm not using it for like coverage of spots or anything, which because we used that color corrector earlier. So, and then I'll usually go in with my Beauty Blender to get right underneath that eye and press that area out. And it's going to highlight underneath that area. Now you can go a little lighter depending on how much brightness you want underneath your eyes. I don't go for a whole lot, but I do like to have some. I'm going to go in with my sponge. But you can use whatever tool you want to here. You don't have to use a brush or, or both. You can just use a sponge if that's, what you, if that's what you normally use. So next step is setting powder so if you want your makeup to stay on all day long i get questions all the time about how do you make your makeup stay on all day long how do you make it last well first of all you got to set it with something now if you have really dry skin you want to go easy on the powder because you can use more of a pressed powder and just kind of dab it on but if you're um, like normal to oily combination skin like me i can actually go in with a pretty good amount of loose powder so this is the maybelline fit me powder this is in the shade Claire, Fair Claire, and I'm going to use this to set my concealer. So this is what's going to help you keep your makeup on all day long. One of the things that's going to help you. I'm just going to go in with my damp sponge. Okay, now remember my sponge is damp. It's not dry. So that way it's going to help absorb that powder on there. And then I'm going to go under, and depending on how much powder you want, you can go as little or as much as you like. I just It just depends on where I'm going and what I'm doing as to how much powder I put on. So you're going to set that concealer. I went pretty heavy today, but you don't have to put this much powder on if your skin is dry because you don't want it settling into those fine lines. Then I'm going to go in and lightly press some more powder on my, the rest of my face. So I'm going to bake a little bit underneath the eyes, which you don't have to do. But if you're not familiar with baking, the baking is basically the powder is going to warm up with the temperature of your skin and it's going to kind of bake in with your foundation and that way it's going to have this like canvas over the top so where it's going to keep your makeup on last longer. Oh my lord. So bronzer is going to be our next step. Now I think bronzer is one of the most important steps that you can do in your makeup is because it brings warmth and it brings more dimension to your face. So I'm going to go in with the Marc Jacobs. This is in the um, color Tantastic. This is what it looks like. Um, and I'm going to go around the perimeters of my face to give my face some warmth, kind of like I've been out in the sun. So it's going to keep my makeup from looking like this blank slate as to what it looks now. We're going to bring some dimension back into the face. Okay. So I'm going to go in with my Hank and Henry Sandra brush, just like this. So this is a preference. I like a more thick kind of rounded brush. You can also use um, the brushes like this. This is a little bit more, um, it's got a little bit more give to it. It just depends on your preference. I like this because it helps me kind of control where I put it, but it also blends it out really well. So, and you can already see like the warmth that it's starting to bring to my face. I like to use a lot of this bronzer. It's a little light for my skin tone, but if I build it up, then I can make it work. So now I've got some warmth to our face. So you see the difference that a bronzer can make. It can, like you could literally just put some mascara on and some lip gloss and be done with it. But I think if you're gonna go through the trouble of putting foundation on, you at least, at least need to have some bronzer on to warm that face up and kind of break it apart from just being like a blank slate. 
Okay, so I went ahead and put a little bit of contour on, a little bit of powder blush. Next up I'm gonna go in with is one of my most favorite, most recent finds that I am absolutely in love with. And it's just, I just look at my makeup now and I go, oh, that little piece of blush that I put on just makes it look so much better. So cream blush. If you're afraid of cream blush, don't be. It is one of the most, I think, underrated products that is out on the market. But once you find one that works for you, it is fantastic. So, of course, I'm going to go in with my favorite. This is the Hank and Henry Cream Blush. And this is in the color BB Rosa. I'm going to show you what it looks like. That's the color right there. Come on, focus, camera. Get it together. All right. So, I did put some powder blush on and what's great about these Hank and Henry cream blushes, they come in four different colors. But what's great about this is you can put it over the powder. So it's not going to pick up the powder, it's not going to move the powder blush and you don't have to put the powder blush on, I just like the combination of both of them. But this cream blush will up your makeup game like that and you will see. So I'm going to take my Hank and Henry um, sponge, this is one that I keep specifically for my cream blushes and I'm just going to go in just like this, and I'm gonna take it and just tap it on the cheeks. And you can already see that it gives that glowy, iridescent, almost like highlighter, but it's not a highlighter, but it's not a blush, but it is a blush. Like, it's just this like combination of like total goodness. So, like, just fabulous. And if you happen to get too much on, you can always go back in with your sponge that you used your powder with and tap it out and just blend it in a little bit more if you put too much. But can never have too much of these blushes they're my favorite so next step to help you up your makeup game is rose water spray now you don't have to have this specific kind you don't have to have the mario badescu rose water i think it comes in like all kind of companies make it i think they have like cucumber they have um lavender they have all kind of whatever scents that you want but this is something that you need in your routine so after i get through doing my makeup and i get to this point I've got a lot of makeup on, but I don't want it to look cakey. So what I do, uh, rudeness. So what I do is take this rose water spray. I'm going to pull my hair back and I'm going to drench my face in this spray. So what that's going to do is it's going to make everything melt together. So all the powder that you put on, all the products that you have on, it's just going to kind of help melt it together so it doesn't look as cakey. So if you want to wear a lot of makeup, this is going to help you get away with it without looking too you know, like a big piece of cake because we don't want to look like that. Especially if you're older and you put a lot of makeup on, it will tend to settle into your fine lines and wrinkles. And this is going to help because it's going to melt everything together. So one of my favorite steps. So I'm just going to go ahead and just pull my hair back just a little bit and we're going to spray. Okay, just like that. Now I'll go in with my um, sponge and just kind of press it out. Only because a lot of times some of the sprayers are not the best sprayers and they like to spit on your face and we don't want that. So we don't want any like big water droplets on your face. So I'm going to go in of course with my Hank and Henry highlighter. This is in the color Glow Bandit. And as you guys can see it's very well loved. I'm going to go in with um, the Hank and Henry brush in Melly. This is just a big fluffy brush. And we're going to go in and put some highlighter on. Now you can go as little or as much as you like. And we're just going to go right here on the cheeks. You guys can see. Just like that. Now, like I said, if you want to, you can kind of go in and blend it with your sponge. That's up to you. But because you have that rose water spray on your face and it's still just a little bit damp, it's going to really help that highlighter just pop when you put it on. Or you could spray your sponge or you could just use the damp sponge if you want to. But I really find that the rose water is one of the key components to making your game, makeup game a little bit stronger. So now we're going to go into brows. So brows are my least favorite thing to do, but it's one of the most important things to do. I've started doing more of a, a um, straighter brow. So one of the things you want to do when you start to do your brows is be careful is when you draw them, you don't want to bring them down the side of your face. And this is one of the things that I had to learn because once you bring them and they come down like a circle this way, it's going to make your face look like it's being pulled down. And what do we not want our face to look like it's doing? 
like being pulled down especially if you're older you don't want anything to accentuate and make your face being look like it's going this way you always want to make it look like it's pulled up this way so the best trick to do that with is when you start to do your brows I'm going to go ahead and brush mine up like this I'm going to get a smaller mirror so I can see what I'm doing and I usually start right here not at the very front but here and I'm going to draw a line and instead of bringing that line down this way I'm going to bring that line more further out more close to like going towards my temple because that way it's going to make your brow look like it's lifted this way instead of pulling it down so you want to be careful don't do like a half I call them comma brows because they look like a comma to me when they're real thick in the front and then they have that little whoop like that so make sure if you want that more lifted look that you bring the tail of the brow out so that's another one of my tricks that I've learned brows are very important and they can be a little bit intimidating so just practicing on them is going to be the best thing for you so i'm going to um we're going to go a little fast forward here and um, i'm going to fill my brows in okay so now i've mapped out the bottom part of my brow and i'm starting on the top but as you can see i took that outer and went straight more towards my temple instead of rounding it and bringing it down. So that's, I'm gonna start to bring it down. There, and then I'm gonna go ahead and fill that in and lightly brush up in the front and make sure that I don't have that block brow in the front. You want it to kind of be more of an ombre. All right, so now you can see that the brow is going more out towards the temple than rounded, and that's going to give you that look that we're really wanting. So I'm just going to go in with some brow gel. This is the Anastasia brow gel, and just set that brow in place. Brush up towards the front, and the more you get towards the middle and the tail of the brow, you want to brush have them laying down. So then there we've got that brow that's making you have that more lifted look, and you know, and that's without plastic surgery. Hmm. I'm gonna go ahead and do the other brow off camera and I will be back in two shakes of a lamb's tail. Have you ever heard that before? My husband says that all the time. I'm like, what does that actually mean? All right, as you can see, I look a little bit different than I did a moment ago. I went ahead and finished this brow and then my camera died. So I went ahead and did my eyes, put some lashes on, and now we're going to move on to the lips. If you want to know what's on my eyes, it is the um, Uptown Girl palette by the Makeup Institute. And this is what the inside looked like. I use these two green colors. Let me find them right there on the bottom and cut the crease and that was it just two colors if you want a tutorial on this let me know and i'll hook it up for you but we're going to go ahead and move on to one of the more important steps that i find in the routine is lip liner now a lot of people don't like to wear lip liner i like to wear it because i believe it gives a little bit more definition to the lips and if you have a problem with your lipstick bleeding like kind of drifting out of the um the area of your lip then a lip liner will always help prevent that so we're just going to go in with a nude since i have you know just a simple eye look on we're just going to keep it simple <laughs> just joking we're going to go in with a nude lip liner this is the urban decay 24 hour seven glide on pencil and this color is in liar and we're just going to line the lips if you want to overline you can i don't have the necessarily need to overline because my lips are a little bigger but if you want to overline you want to make sure that you bring it a little bit above your cupid's bow and then right here under the bottom all right so now we've got the lips lined if it feels like it's too much for you you can always go in with your finger and blend it out so we're going to go in with just a little bit of lipstick. I'm just going to go in with my Maybelline nearly there. And fill those lips in. And then I'm also going to go in with the gloss just because I'm a little extra. This is the Hank and Henry Orle Lip Gloss. You're going to put a little bit on there. Just like that. And where's my setting spray? I swear, I can never keep up with anything over here. Hello, setting spray. Where are you? 
All right, so I did find some setting spray. So I'm gonna go in with the Urban Decay All Nighter Setting Spray. Now this is another crucial tip if you want your makeup to stay on all day long and kind of elevate that game and be like, hmm, you did something different to your makeup because it's been on a really long time and it looks really great. So you're just gonna take this and we're just gonna spray the face, let it dry. And that's gonna help that makeup stick like glue. So. This is the finished look. I hope you guys liked it. I know this is not very natural. It's a little bit more glam, a little bit more out there. You don't have to do any kind of eyes like this. I just wanted to kind of play around with some color today. So if you like this video and you like this tutorial, please give me a thumbs up. You can subscribe down below and let me know any other videos that you would like to see in the future. And with that said, yeah, I think I'm going to go have a snack and watch some TV. So I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Bye.